We know this has been a crazy year for all of us, whether you're a parent, a student, or an educator. Um, and so trying to navigate all these uh, changes due to COVID, we just want to strive to ensure you have so many opportunities to receive all the information since we are not allowed to have many people come to the school and we're not allowed to have large gatherings. But since this is a virtual meeting and there's a lot of information and you may have a lot of questions, please never hesitate to reach out to the counseling department at any time if you do have a question. So leading into our presentation, we're going to all introduce the counselors are going to introduce themselves and what alphabet we serve. So I'm starting off as Dawn White and I have alphabet A through D in. Hi, I'm Ann Luigi, and my alpha is last name start with D O to K. Hi, I'm Amy Nichols, and my alpha split is L through Q. Hi, I'm Jennifer Tamayo, and my alpha is R through Z. <clears throat> At this time, Ms. Luigi will give us a brief review of the graduation requirements. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, I know on everybody's mind is what does my child have to do to graduate? Well, here's a picture of it right there. It's like the first thing we have to do, one of our requirements is earn 26 required of the state credits. There is an endorsement that they have to have that's included, and we will talk about that in just a few minutes. The other big requirement is to pass five all required STAR or end of course exams. Those are English 1, English 2, Algebra 1, Biology, and U.S. History. Now, I know we've been hearing a lot of talk about the students don't have to take their EOCs this year, but that's not the case. I know because last year was a little bit different, but what happened last year was if your student was enrolled in a course that is an EOC tested subject and they passed the class and received credit, then the EOC was waived. That was only for last year, for the 2019-2020 school year. That is not the case for this year. Uh, if your student does not pass the EOC the first time, there will be opportunities for them to retake the test in the fall and the spring of the following years until they pass the test. Our next slide shows some more information and kind of breaks it down a little bit. On this slide, we have a sample graduation plan, and this is just an example. Your student's plan may look different, and it may look different based on their needs and not many people have the exact same plan going throughout high school. Each student is going to need four English language art classes. English 1 and English 2 are your end of course exams or your star test. We also need four, class, four math class. On this one, this student has algebra, geometry, algebra 2, and a fourth math. Now algebra is an EOC tested subject. Geometry is a required subject by the state, but it is not EOC tested. Going on to sciences, we have for this student, biology, chemistry, physics. Biology, again, is this EOC star test. Chemistry is another class that's required. It's not really required, but we like to use it for our multidisciplinary students. And then there's some other sciences that they can pick. There's too many to kind of list, but it also depends on their endorsement and what their interest lies in. Next is social studies. <clears throat> some of our courses are world geography and or world history. U.S. History, U.S. Government and Economics. The U.S. History is EOC tested. The U.S. Government and Economics are required. It's a semester each, but they are not EOC tested. We have PE, where they have to have one credit. They can get it in PE. They can get it in athletics, ROTC, football, basketball, baseball, soccer, track, uh, cross country, cheerleading, drill team, ROTC. There's a lot of sports listed that they can choose. Golf is in there too. <laughs> Foreign language, you have to have two credits in the same language. They can start in Spanish and take two years of Spanish or two years in a computer science. You cannot mix or match your foreign language. It has to be the same foreign language. Fine arts, doesn't mean just art. There's band, choir, theater arts, technical theater. There's floral design, color guard. I think I said dance. And then uh, there are several electives we can choose from, and that really ties into where their endorsement is. That's how they base what electives they want. Um, in the next part of this presentation, Ms. Nichols will discuss our endorsements.
Okay, sorry, I'm having to turn on my mic and <laughs> do the presentation. So um, the next part we're going to talk about is endorsements. So as Ms. Luigi said, every student does have an endorsement, needs a, an endorsement to graduate. Since your student is already in high school, they do already have an endorsement path that they are working on. So those endorsements, there are five different ones that can be STEM, business and industry, arts and humanities, public service, and multidisciplinary. Some students actually graduate with multiple endorsements, but they only have to have one to graduate. Um, as you can see, the, st the four STEM, business and industry, arts and humanities, and public service are each their own, but multidisciplinary kind of goes across all of those. So it's kind of like uh, maybe majoring in general studies in college. It's kind of trying to find out what you're interested in and taking a little bit of everything. If you want to find out more about our endorsements, if you will see the link in this slide where it says a SHS course catalog, you can click on that in the presentation and it will take you to our course catalog and it will give you more information about those endorsements and the specific classes that your student will be taking in order to receive their chosen endorsement. Another opportunity we have here at Splendor High School are honors, pre-AP, AP, and dual credit classes. So the advantage of these are that they have a more rigorous coursework, they have a weighted GPA, <clears throat> they better prepare students for college, and you can earn college credit with dual credit classes, also as well as AP classes if you take that AP test and make the score that you need to to get that AP college credit in those classes. Um, these also come with a course commitment which requires the student to commit to that class and commit to the coursework that's in it and that they are committed to doing that rigorous coursework and exit guidelines in order to get out of the class. Um, so in order to get out of the class, they can't just drop the class. There are requirements they have to fulfill in order to exit the class. That does require meeting with their teacher and also with their counselor. And so in order to be, I'm sorry, in order to be um, ready to take dual credit classes, they do have to have a TSI score and they have to take that test. So uh, Splendor High School will be offering TSI testing to students we are likely to start that in February with seniors. We're going to work down to freshmen. All testing will be done during the school day. Students can communicate with their English and math teachers to prepare for the test. And if requested, teachers can also enroll students in an edgenuity course for TSI prep. There's a link in this slide that's highlighted in blue that students can use to download a study app and print some sample questions. So at this time, Ms. Tamayo is going to talk to you about the process of how we are going to meet with students in the classroom and what their uh, selection form is going to look like this year. Students will meet with a counselor to complete their course selections. Starting tomorrow, counselors will be assisting juniors to complete their selections in their English 3 classes. On February 5th, sophomores will complete their course selections in their English 2 classes. Freshmen will meet on February 12th during their social studies classes to complete their selections. If your student is absent during the day a counselor is in their classroom, your student's counselor will call your student down at a later time to complete their selections. Remote students will be contacted by their assigned counselor to assist with their course selections. Counselors will provide each student with a proposed schedule of courses based on their individual graduation requirements. Your student will bring home a copy of this form. This is an example of the form. Jane Doe is a junior. She has previously selected an endorsement of public service in nursing and health science. She will need to take her four core classes listed based on her current class enrollments. She will take practicum of health science in nursing as a required elective that is needed for her endorsement strand. Then she is able to choose two electives of her choice to complete her schedule for the next year. 
On this slide, you will see an example of the course request sheet that will be completed by your student in class. It is a duplicate form. The counselors will keep the top form and your student will take home the bottom portion for your review. Students will be required to list alternative class options on the bottom portion of this form. This will allow your student to be placed in a class that they would like to be in, in the event that their first option is unavailable. Please review your student's classes and sign and date the form. Your student will then return this form to the counseling office. If your student has changed their mind about the endorsement that they have chosen, please make a note at the bottom of the form and have them turn them in to the counselor's office. Your student's counselor will call your student down to discuss other endorsement options that may be available. Each student will also be given a course selection guide sheet that has all the classes that are available to them to choose from depending on their grade level. They will be allowed to take this form home to help you discuss their possible options. On the front page, we will have core classes and required electives listed, such as fine arts, foreign language, PE. On the back page, we have the endorsement strands. Each strand starts with the introductory class and then moves up into the upper level classes. Each one of these sheets are grade specific and are posted on our Counselor Canvas page and also on the SHS website. At this time, Ms. White will give us some more information about how to access our forms and other information on the Canvas platform. Canvas. Most of you should be familiar at this time because Canvas is the platform that you were introduced to during this year when we started remote learning. Canvas is a pretty neat platform more, for more than just online classwork learning though. The counseling department has created a Canvas account in order to have the ability to push out information and needed inf information to students and parents in an easy to view format. So at the beginning of the year, every student should have been assigned or given access to their can can counseling Canvas account associated with their specific grade level. In their account, we have posted information such as grade level checklists to keep them on track, college testing practice, and dates. There are also links provided for students to explore and learn more about, learn more about college, workforce, military, and even trade schools. Once students are seniors, this platform is a very useful and friendly option that we utilize to post our scholarship applications. So the question may be, what can an observer as a parent actually do in Canvas? It's more for the students to link to their parents so that you can have access to see what they're seeing. So what can you see? You can see course announcements, course assignment pages, documents that we post in there, um, if it's a classroom, you can see their grade um, and you can access the student conversations. What can a parent or an observer not do? You cannot submit assignments for your stu student. You cannot join their groups, send messages to other students or even view the other students that are in that account. So let's talk about how do you become an observer into Canvas. The first and most important step is that a parent must know their student's username and password. Well, that's probably not as easy because I'm sure the students don't share that very easily, but you can talk to your student and get that information. Now, one of the problems that you may encounter is that the students are not uh, remembering what those usernames and passwords are since we have moved to our single sign-on through ClassLink. So in the event that your student does not recall what their username or password may be, then you can contact our media specialist at the high school, Ms. Jones, um, at 281-689-1012. And then she should help your student, be able to help your student reset her password and get into that account. So once you have that, now you're ready to become an observer. You would go to the link that is listed on this slideshow, and then we're gonna go to step two. Once you are into the link, you will see next to the Splendora ISD logo, it says parent of a Canvas user. Once you see that, you're going to click there to build, build your account. Step three is once you have paired, you're going to pair your observer account. So once you are in that new screen, you have to have your student log into their Canvas account. Please note that this must be done on a computer, not on their iPhone or smart device. 
once you're into your student's account, they will then click the settings link to find their pair code. So once they see pair with observer, they will click that button and it will open up a copy pairing code. Now this six di digit alphanumeric pairing code is going to be needed for the parent to add to their account. Those are case sensitive, so please make sure that you copy it just as you see. Once you paste that into your parent observer account, then you will be linked to your student's Canvas. So what's important about this is parents, if you're already linked to your student's account, you need to get in there and check out the Counseling Canvas page. We have lots of useful information that you would benefit with talking with your students at home. Um, and even more of a reason to join the Canvas is this whole presentation with the links that are clickable are already loaded into your student's Canvas account, as well as the course selection sheets based on their specific grade level. So all of this information is wrapped up and easily accessible for you starting right now. So, Again, we know that this year has been crazy and that you, this is a lot of information to take in, but we want to make sure that you understand how we're select, helping your students select their schedules. So please never ever hesitate to reach out to us so we can help you. We will be available by appointment with parents and or students individually, virtually or by phone to discuss any questions or concerns that you may have about selecting courses for the 21-22 school year. You can always email the specific counselor at the links provided below, or you can always contact our secretary by phone or email to set up an appointment on our calendars. We look forward to scheduling your students and helping them pursue all of their dreams. So at this time, we plan on opening up the floor for some uh, general questions.